Although caching is a highly effective method to optimize data fetching, there are scenarios where you might want to opt out of this default behavior. For individual data fetchers, you can opt out of caching by setting the cache option to no store. This ensures data is fetched directly from the data source every time fetch is called. In page.tsx within our products folder, for the fetch request, we can specify an option, cache no store. If we save the file and return to the browser to reload the slash products page and open our JSON server terminal, we see that a new request has been logged. This one is with 3.115 milliseconds. If we reload the page again, another log entry appears. Data is fetched newly from the data source each time fetch is called by passing the cache entirely. This is the most straightforward method to opt out of caching in XJS. Now let's explore a few advanced scenarios you should be aware of. It turns out that once you specify the no store option for a fetch request, subsequent fetch requests will also not be cached. This behavior isn't well documented, but I want to share what I observed. In the products page, start by making an additional fetch request for product details as the first request before the one with the no store option. So const details response is equal to await fetch. We're going to pass in the same URL along with the product ID. Next, we convert the response to JSON. And for the JSX, the data binding is not crucial, so we will keep it simple and include it within the map method. Details.price. Details refers to the product object with ID set to 1. Open the terminal. Restart JSON server. Stop the Nextjs server. Delete the .next folder. And restart the dev server. Back in the browser, reload slash products. We see the two incoming requests, one to slash products slash one, and the other to slash products. On reloading the page, there is no new request for slash products slash one as it has been cached and reused. The slash products endpoint, however, is not cached due to the no store option and we see the request logged each time. Now let's position the details fetch request after the no store option request. Stop the servers, delete the .next folder, and restart. npm run dev, node server. Reload slash products. And we see both the requests as expected, slash products, slash products, slash one. Reload again. And this time we see both requests, slash products, as well as slash products, slash one again. This demonstrates that neither fetch request is cached. This behavior is not mentioned in the documentation from what I could tell, but from this experiment, it seems like a wise choice to place any requests you wish to cache before a fetch request set to no store. Alternatively, you could specify a route level configuration. So at the top, export const fetch cache is equal to default cache. This is known as a route segment configuration. Stop both the servers. Delete the .next folder. Restart the servers. And reload slash products. 
you can see both requests appear as expected. We load the page again, and it is clear the product details response, so slash products slash one, is now cached as it appears only once. We see slash products twice, but not the product details request. So fetch cache, set to default cache, and this is a route segment configuration. Now the documentation does cover the behavior of dynamic functions with respect to caching. By default, Next.js will cache fetch requests that occur before any dynamic functions are used and will not cache requests found after dynamic functions. We know from the section on routing that we have three dynamic functions, cookies, headers, and search params, which is more of an object. But let's go back to VS Code and understand the caching behavior with an example using the cookies function. I'm going to comment out the route segment config and instead import cookies from next slash headers. I'm going to remove the cache no store option on the first fetch request. Instead, in between the two fetch requests, const cookie store is equal to cookies and const theme is equal to cookies.get. Let's assume there is a cookie called theme set in a browser. We aren't concerned with the value of theme, so we can have this without the assignment. Stop the server, delete the .next folder, and restart with npm run dev and node server. Back in the browser, reload slash products. We should see both requests logged. On reloading the page, you can see the first request, which is to slash products, has been cached, but not the second request to product details. So Next.js will not cache any fetch request after a dynamic function has been invoked. I want to conclude this video by saying that the route segment configuration fetch cache accepts quite a few values as specified in the Next.js documentation. I recommend reviewing this to understand how you can manage caching behavior for specific routes in your application. All right, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.